Yeah! Welcome to Coffee and Cannabis. I'm your host, Eliza, and this is... Corey, what's up? And we are still at Nikan. You know, this is one of our favorite conventions to be at. It's our special edition. We pop up here, and we show out. And you know, we bring you the most incredible guest. Um, this guy is really phenomenal because he's sort of mysterious in a way. He's, he's always everywhere. He started a really what some would say unique business and the uniqueness of it is that it's specific to cannabis. He's fulfilling a niche, getting information out there. Someone that I know you all want to learn more about, Mr. Dan from the publication Hetty. Please give it up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Dan Uloa. I'm uh, editor of HettyNJ.com. We're a New Jersey cannabis community uh, news company, you know, covering the uh, cannabis uh, industry here politics and the culture as it's really been booming, you know, fighting the good fight for like social equity, you know, fighting for diverse locally owned industry for home grow, covering these things and happy to be here, you know, talking to you guys. You guys are impressive yourself. This is a hell of an operation itself. <laughs> I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. And, you know, you just have such a dope story. You and I have chopped it up separately and I've gotten to know a little bit about you. I'm, I'm super proud to share your journey today. But before we get into it, we are drinking our delicious convention coffee because no Big one can find you anything coffee. better. What are we smoking on? Uh, well, they won't let me smoke in here still. So. But I got that <laughs> high prophecy, you know what I'm saying? I got that high prophecy straight from the D, and then someone snuck me a little something that I'm yes. sipping a little bit of uh, that live rosin from Bell Ringers, my boy Joe. That had me in his own. That had me in his own, which is why you don't see one in my hand right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. listen, Dan. Before we get into really the businessy side of stuff, I just want people to know a little bit about your journey. Can you just share a bit about your background, but also what led you to the cannabis industry? Yeah, you know, so like I have like a background like in politics writing. So like I really like like combining like that with like uh, and how you know combining like politics writing and weed. Okay. You know, like the, the process of it, you know, covering it, seeing that this is going to be like a great industry. Like there is social justice in it. You know, it's a lot of fun and it's weed, so like, it makes me feel good. <laughs> There's all these things that keep going and see like this is going to be a big thing and like a big thing across the United States. It'll be big here in Jersey, for example. So, yeah, I've been doing that, having fun doing it, you know, seeing like the dispensaries like come up, you know, like slowly but surely seeing the politics of it and like what it takes to do this thing. What were you doing before that you had the skill to transition into writing? Because literally, I mean, a publication is you are writing. Yeah. You're, you're the editor in chief, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did you? Did you have a? Um, were you a writer before? I know you said politics. What yeah. Did you do? Yeah. So like, I have a background as like a journalist, like covering like local government and like different issues. Okay. That like I've been able to like translate to cannabis. So it's like the politics of like local towns and the politics of cannabis. For example, very serious. And then like I was a Democratic campaign manager in uh, 2016. Uh, in Ohio, uh, which was a wild time. So, you know, I have a lot of experience, like, in promotion, like, understanding the... So, you know, like, applying it to, like, Hetty has been uh, fun. Good, good. And that's incredible for people to learn about the transferable skills, right? Yeah. We talk about that all the time. Yeah. You come from another industry, and then you just add cannabis to it. I mean, you're already in journalism. You are ever you already have the skill set to produce it yeah. in this space. That's dope. Um you know, and I, I think another thing is like what people are noticing. We're what three years into the industry here now. Yeah, the my rec- fifth anniversary next month of like being the editor of like Hetty and Jay. Wow, yeah, five, five years. Five years, 2019, before COVID. Thank you, thank yes. you. I covered the seventh dispensary opening. Like there's like 160 now, and yeah. like it's like almost like a crazy amount or like wild. Like they're opening like one day, like they're opening the same day different places crazy parties but like this is not a thing that happened five years ago i assure right. you it's right like wild so. og and decide to jump in like i mean we're talking five years i said three because i was talking about the rec market right but you're talking about like day one yeah you're like this is going to be big to have that foresight is actually really big to know like this is going to be big yeah. and i'm going to take a shot and start yeah. writing without anyone reading that's tough Right? Like, yeah. people don't realize when you start your first business, you don't have any customers. You yeah. still have customers. Your customers are your audience that's reading yeah. your publication. How did you navigate that? Yeah, that so growth it was of like that. absolutely like a wild idea to do this, and it is like a crazy entrepreneur, like boss thing, like visionary thing. It's not for the weak of heart. It was mm-hmm. like a struggle to get off the ground, but I loved it. Like, I saw that there was going to be a market, I saw that people love weed. 
you know, I saw that, like, you couldn't have these things. I saw that we were going to get there. We had, like, medical then. Like, the medical program they were expanding, like, bit by bit, so I was writing about that. And then the farm bill had passed by then. So, like, the CBD, like, craze was, like, another thing that was, like, popping off. Like, it passed in 18. By 19, we were seeing, like, shops, you know. We were seeing them stuff, like, all this, like, Delta stuff started, like, in 2019, was coming about. And then, like, it was just, like, a thing that was, like, developing that was, like, really interesting that I could see that, like, this is going to be hard. Like, I always wanted to get rich eventually. I never was going to get rich quick, you know. I was, like, eventually. You know, we're doing pretty well right now. We didn't, weren't doing so well in 19, 20, 20, forget it. Oh, my God. Like, they have to, like, I thought the bill was also, I got in fall 19. I thought the bill was going to pass, like, December, January. 20, you know, and then like we would have the market. It took another year to get to like where I wanted the market to be. Like that was intense to have to go through like the referendum. But we got there. We're here. We won. We won. People love weed. <coughs> Stayed in the fight. So yeah, it's Stayed been fun. You know, like we've been doing it. You know, covering this, covering the interests of people. You know, trying to bring this to like the community so the consumers know about things. You know. People want to learn about things. You know, the potheads want to read sometimes, too. You know, yes, it's fun. Yes, often, actually. And we should break that misconception that, that education is not critical. That's what you're bringing. You're bringing yeah. access to information, right? Educating consumers on the legal industry as well. Because a lot of people are still in the legacy market, in the black market. And something that you've done is tapped into an asset that's critical, which is media and digital presence. They're becoming one of the greatest assets from business and marketing, right? And we have separate conversations about that. You were brilliant in, in, in starting a publication, which you've now grown to almost 30, 30K on Instagram. Thank you. That's crazy, you. right? But it's not always so sweet, as we know. What What is one thing that you wish you knew when you first got started? Oh, my God. Just one thing? Just, oh, give that's me so three. Hard. Give me three, because we want to we add so value to, to the learn. audience. Like, you got, like, first of all, you're going to learn... First of all, you're going to have a bad day, and you're probably going to mess something up, and it's going to be, like, the worst, and you need passion to get you through that. And then, like, at some level, like, when you become, like, it's one thing to be a writer. It's another thing to be, like, the pub and the editor, okay, like, the boss. It's another thing to be, like, a, the publisher and the businessman and to learn, like, what is necessary to do that and how to, like, navigate that. And, like, navigating the both things is, like, a skill set. That, like I've developed as like I've done it and it's been intense like learning about like publishing and like media is intense because it's also a constantly changing thing it's like if I wanted to play like a ship like going like back in the day you know like a sailing ship from like England to like America like you car like you have like this like the Gulf Stream like what if the Gulf Stream change mid course like that's what happens like with Google and Facebook and Instagram and like all these like things is like the nature of the business media changes right. as we're building this thing. It's like I gotta like pivot, we gotta be like more like videos or we gotta like you know more focus on like other things and see like where things are developing and like following like trends. It's been like a big industry and like figuring out who the audience is too right. is very interesting. We you know we have like a lot of problems. You know, we have like you know people in the industry like us, consumers like us, patients like us, you know, business people. You know, so we're trying to build that and figure that out. You know, and these are all like skills and like learning how to figure these things out. Like was like a process that took time. And like without the passion, I would have quit. You know, without winning a grant, you know, uh, shout out NJ Civic uh, Consortium, I would have quit. You know, without that because it's intense. You know. Well, I'm definitely you glad resources. you didn't because yeah. uh, I've been reading your stuff for a long time. Oh, you're the best. Uh, no, I name. really, I really treat Hetty like the CNN of New Jersey. Like I'll go on LinkedIn. It's like, oh, he posted something. All right, let me see what's going on. <laughs> all right, okay. Now I'm. In, uh, all right, I know what's going on. Yep, now. Yep. Like, I think you give a very, um, have a knack for giving a very clear, unbiased, but like just a very clear, direct. This is what's happening. Here's the facts that actually matter. Like, and now you can go with that. It's like, it's not opinion, overly opinionated. It's very just like. This is the reality of that situation. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, well, I kind of you very much use your establishment for that. I'm like, all right. Right now, I'm, I'm informed. I actually know what's going on now. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Well, I'm a little so opinionated, but as long as it's hey. not too much, you know. I, it's I always interesting it. things, these issues. There's a lot of controversial issues, like in cannabis, there you are. know. And they need to be yeah. highlighted because someone needs to tell both sides of the story. Right? Yeah. We need the truth. Yeah. yeah. Um, and with that, you've obviously been very intimately involved with the industry because you have interviewed and went to see so many operators, gone to damn near every single grand opening with a press pass. Like, no one has had more access probably than you. 
what would you tell to an inspiring entrepreneur looking to get into this market? Not from your experience, but what you've viewed going to different dispensaries, seeing people successful, not successful, layouts, um, uh, uh, customer experience. Like, what is one thing that you would definitely tell to an aspiring entrepreneur today? You're jumping in. That's interesting. Say, so, like, one thing. Like, I think there's, like, a lot you can learn about, like, it's hard with the dispensary and, the, like, the license because, like, it's it's almost two things. It's, like, a campaign to get a license is not the same as a marketing campaign. And, like, mm. the nature of, like, like learning how to do that and figuring that out, I think, is a thing. Like, learning to be a businessman and, like, deal with, like, wholesalers and, like, vendors and partners and, like, vendors and, like, the nature of the industry is, like, a skill you can develop. It's, like, you want to sell weed, but you have to develop this whole business and organization around selling weed, you know? If you want to talk about weed and the great, like, chronic and shit and, like, sativa, you know, you got to have this whole thing and, like, understand the red tape of Jersey and the politics, too. That's what you really have to do if you really want, like, a license. you got to be an act activist. Mm. That's it. That you're wearing clear. many wearing many hats. We're running good, uh, trying to open a dispensary. It's yes, like you said, the business person, the the sales <laughs> person, the enthusiast, uh, the politician at times. Yeah, right. A, yeah, right. Like an activist. Right. Yeah, you have to do everything. <laughs> right. You gotta wear all these hats. They don't all fit. Yeah. Especially that's the if catch. you don't have the skill and, like, for if you, it. Like you guys got partnership. Like that's an important thing. You know, being able to build a good team. And you have people that bring other things to the table so that that one person doesn't have to do it all. But the reality is that when you're opening this kind of business, a dispensary, even, you would have so many people on your team to do all of the various things that are actually required. So there are, you have to have people that can do multiple things. They can't, you know, so yeah, somebody does have to maybe do some operations and do a little bit of marketing too. Maybe marketing is not their thing. We have a podcast. This was part of our marketing strategy, but it also was part of our value add, right? We want to be able to put other people on the platform. So you have to be creative and you have to think outside the box. Um, but to your point, you have to wear many hats. Maybe yeah. that's why you and I always have a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> a man and a woman of many hats. No doubt. Oh, man. Um, I want to look ahead. Because as, and no one here can see it, but it's a beautiful visual that we have of all of these minority, black-owned business, disabled-owned veteran businesses that are here at NECAN, that are part of this social equity lane, so to speak, um, that has been because of the partnership with 420NJ Events. And the industry is transforming right before our eyes. Just last year, this looked nothing like this. Just the year before, it looked even less like this. Because Jer Jersey is transforming so fast, what do you envision for the future of the cannabis industry? But especially regarding like some of the legal changes, now that they're able to see operational businesses and the regulatory commission can have greater insight as to what's happening on the ground, what do you envision for our future? The market, that's a good question. So like the dispensary like pace really like has not stopped with like the openings. And seeing more openings and seeing like the competition and it's gonna be and it's vicious and like you're in Jersey City, like the mayor full of like likes the idea of like a competitive market because it is ultimately a more transparent and politically open process to let them compete versus a process where we have in these towns like you know the mayor a little too well right. and that's a little too scandalous and right. Hetty might find you and like re fucking <laughs> report on you. Yeah. Uh, and like I that's like one that. of the things is like shit. Yeah. yeah, that's like a yeah. big issue. It's like this like this is probably a low-key scandal I gotta find about that. There's a low-key scandal about remediation. You gotta x-ray the weed because the weed is moldy. Yes. It's like a scandal. Like we're having but like and then you know we have like small MSOs and some and like a, some of them are really cool if they have like the same values <coughs> of like the super mom and pop that's like grown to be a big business. It's not the same as like a, as an even larger corporation with no values. Right. And they're very different operations, and then that's interesting. And then we see like a guy like you, people like you, like do you just want one dispensary and that's it? No. Right. Right. Everybody either wants to sell out or go big, you know. Right. And like I respect that. Like I want to be bigger, you right. know. So like I respect you want to, you want to cultivate, you want to go into another, you want to go into New York, you want to go to Philly, you want to go to Maryland, you know. Like I was, you know, respecting the hustles is like an interesting thing. As long as you keep the values, I think it's a very different company right. and like a company worth supporting if you keep these values that you have. And like if you start with it, it's a lot easier than trying to find values like midway. 
than to like to keep the value that you had in the first place and like being like this is like how we've grown this is who we are we can be in other states we can have growing and more and then that's the other thing is chains mm. dispensary chains one way or another I think are an interesting thing and like seeing like how those work out be interesting what's your what's your thoughts on what that development is going to look like because Jersey has restrictions. It's only one dispensary, if you're a boutique, and then the MSOs. What is MSOs? They could have three? Yeah, so that was like the medical ones were allowed like this three one? locations yes. to have that. There's a lot of games around like the license and who's owning the license. And like Eliza could own like, can own like license A and be the majority on that. Corey could be like the, on li- license two in another location, the majority owner on that license. The other, other side, the other side, Patterson, the other side, Newark, for yeah. example. And, like, so we're seeing, like, things like that. And it's an interesting thing because, you know, like, you have, like, good guys like you I want to see expand, you know, companies that don't, like, have these, like, values we've been trying to describe, like, quality craft cannabis, you know, home grow, you know, minority owned, you know, women owned, you know, Hispano, you know, I'm proving. So it's great to see, you know, Ms. Rodriguez, Rivera yes. Rodriguez here, you know, succeeding is a big issue. Like, Hispanic reputation representation is down and it's difficult you know we have and then that's the other issue is like if you know if you have Asian you know like it's great to see like Asians succeed and African Americans succeed what about Hispanics and that becomes like a really difficult issue too and you know you try to support the people that like are good at business and right. really seeing who's good at business is a hell of a thing yeah I think I think that's a that's a great point um because we want equity amongst all minority groups right but I think the core comes down to who is able to either come to the table with the business acumen or swiftly adapt? Yeah. That they can, or get the right people on your team, not predatory right. people that really yeah. fall in line with your vision that you can drive this together. But you're spot on. Yeah. So that's like you've seen like a lot of serial business people succeed. They had one thing, they're doing another thing. Like they understand the mechanism of a business, you know, or they're growing it bit by bit. Like that's kind of this is my first business. Like it was insane, intense. That first year, that first couple of years, you know, trying to get it as a market and then realizing this town game would be like vicious and like trench warfare is what it turned into. We've had like this, and like we're getting it and we're getting dispensaries, but it's been like a vicious trench warfare and like opposition, like the, like people were for like, well, can I have a dispensary over there? Maybe not over here and like the, like the nature of that. And then like fighting, people are still against it can like, they might not have won the war they can win like all these like little battles it's like this whole ongoing thing and this whole ongoing process of like the nature of it as somebody who might like small business might already own business but hey it's cannabis you know or they just don't know about cannabis like the whole thing of like this like like a federal prohibition for like 80 90 years is like insane and like a horrible yeah in jersey city we have a councilman like that he loves small business he loves oh. veterans but he hates cannabis. Oh, and he abstained on our yes. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yes. He's an interesting Look, guy. I still love you, Bagiano. Yeah. Thank you for your service. I'm going to do great in the community. I'm so glad for your service. You don't have to say yes to us. We're going to win anyway. I'm still a disabled one in our own well, we, business. We also have you know, politicians that own or are related to people that own. Oh, that's yes. it. Yeah. That's, that's another like story. Another you will find y'all. <laughs> we got we got Dan on the case. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like a big issue of like the nature of this. Like where it's like Hudson County Commissioner Cherry Walker has a license. Like the daughter of like Jersey City Council President Joyce Waterman has a license. Do you know like Junior Maldonado is a Hudson County clerk and like Hispanic and like the like a part owner on a license. Do you know, and we're seeing that type of thing of like people that are really connected. And it's wild. So, like, one of the great examples of cannabis of a success story is Wanda James, who is, like, a Democratic National Committee of Convention, like, delegate, and, mm-hmm. like, the campaign manager of, like, the governor has a license. And that's success. Yeah. That's a very nuanced situation there to say, like, is this corrupt? Is this shady? Or is it just, like, this is a person that understands this wild, weird political process? It's very nuanced. It's very nuanced because you still have folks that are still a part of the minority community that still want to be able to participate in the industry and have opportunity. That's what that's what cannabis looks like to everybody. Opportunity. Yeah. 
And it's it's so murky because it's like, what do you call okay and what is criticized? Right. So we have like a, it's an interesting thing. And like you have like some of these episodes care a little more than others. And they're going to make a deal with the company. And like if you have like a super white label deal where it's your brand and your sweat and this thing. And they're only doing certain things. And like you're still like a you know, minority. Like Mata Pagaro has a deal with the MSO Columbia Care. You know, they had to be unionized. You know, people in unionized places that are great to work mm-hmm. is one thing that I've noticed. So, like, they were, so they, like, they were an effort to unionize them, but they're still supporting Mata's fun. She's got cookies. Now we're going to have cookies by this black woman, you know, in the market, and that's great. You know, we, it's like the first cookies, 2024. Yes. You know, people like, we cookies are a thing. I've been, like, a thing since the 60s, I bet, with, like, hippies and records, you know, when before, like, the internet sounded like a crack dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's interesting, you know, seeing this. It's developing a lot. What are your thoughts, Corey? No, I'm just. It's a pleasure to have you. Like I said, I've been I've been reading your work for years, um, and you know I, I will continue to do so. That's how I'll be finding my scoops. That's how I be when I be up here talking spicy. I'll be reading heady. I'm gonna tell, give you all the special <laughs> sauce. I be cheating. I be right there. Oh, I'm about to light you y'all up on this. You next got a episode. brand ambassador. You didn't yeah, even know listen, about. Listen, I. I That's think, the best, thank you. And, Just say, like, according to Hetty, you know, yeah, X, Y, Z. There you listen, go. Uh, I got yeah, to start putting it in the drops. Like, listen, I was reading Hetty the other day. <laughs> but, but, yeah, look, I think that's the important part is, you know, be corny. Knowledge is power, right? No doubt. But, like, sure. if you're going to be in an industry, be of an industry, be of the, you know, cannabis also has a culture, not just the industry. Yeah. Um, those that work and have struggled through it know the difference between listen this is the most loving culture i've ever been to right. yeah and the most toxic industry i've ever worked <laughs> in at the same time right that, like you yeah. get both things. like it's so like if you're in the culture of cannabis it's love everybody supports you show love everybody looks out for each other i've been handed so much free weed this weekend um it's too much weed oh, but damn. it's also the industry of it is rough yeah right? it's not built for the week and, yeah. and understanding that difference of the culture and of the industry, right? Yeah, um, that's and really hard. Your publication yeah. has been able to provide that some of that understanding to, to a lot of people. I think. Yeah, so, yeah, it's been really hard because that's like I love cannabis. Like you connect like 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 Wall Street white boy like hustlers can smoke like a blunt with a guy you know from the streets you know who's like maybe been slinging you know and that's cool. Like there's commonalities like we right. can find as people like in the United States as people in Jersey. And that, like, that's like cannabis brings us together and like it unifies us. I think that's why they don't really like it, but that's another story. But like this is what we need, like connection, the connecting with people is good. But like it's such a weird industry because it's so because like the other people like cat they think it's heroin, they right. think it's cocaine, they think it's the tobacco, so they hate it or they, so they gotta create like a million hoops to jump through. Yeah. And it's really hard to jump through hoops. Uh, they make they make it so tough. Um I'm a I'm a pivot off of business real quick because you know I'm all about healing and wellness, and I really want to talk about personal growth because cannabis can be very healing, and a lot of times that's how people start their their journey here. Um, but the the other thing is that this industry in particular really allows you to show up as yourself, as Co- Corey was talking about, it being loving and embracing. And you're able to really be authentic. I mean, I lived 10 years of my life. I wore a uniform every single day. And now I'm able to be myself yeah, and be expressive. Intense. Yeah, Thank and show up to work how I want to be. Intense. Thank you. Thank you. It gave me great preparation for this battlefield right here. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> right. That's a transferable yeah. skill there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who Military officer to, to dispensary owner. People <sighs> do that, yeah. You know, when I was sitting in that turret, I just wish I knew that, you know, weed was my future. <laughs> You got through hell it, here we are. Yeah. Hell, of a, hell of a spin you did there. <laughs> um, oh, too funny. How has working in such a such a challenging environment, ha, you know, really just changed you personally and professionally? Like, how have you healed and grown being in this space, transitioning from politics and regular news into, like Corey says, this loving culture and environment? Right, so there's like two things where like the culture is awesome and like it's great to see people in weed. And, like, weed is great for, like, anxiety and, like, inflammation. And, like, CBG as a cannabinoid that really helps with, like, a lot of the things I got, you know, is great. And it's great. And, like, I do feel better. And, like, I think it brings out, like, the chattiness versus being in my head or just writing. You know, here we are. You know, chilling. You know, it's fun. But, like, it is a vicious industry and it is hard. And, like, cannabis is hard. But, like, 
you know, think of like movies in 1905. Movies in 1905 were not movies in 1950 with special effects and colors and like really great movies. You know, so we're getting there, you know, it's more like movies in 1905. We're going to get to like the 30s with color and like special effects and stuff. And like it's, but like it's hard. And if I, if, without the passion for the plan, I'd just be like, fuck this. But like it's great. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about this swim, but it's uh, it's great okay. to be in the industry and like figure these things out and like you get through the next day you're like okay I could do it this way or it's like I figure out I ask a friend for help I ask a guy I know for help you know and things get a little better and like figuring that out is like good too is like the camaraderie or somebody that can like give you a little advice and point you in the right direction or to see if there's a way to do it like you can get through it bit by bit and then like you like succeed. And then, like, things are good. But, like, it's, like, you have to love it, and you have to figure that out. And you have to, like, be resilient. And you have to be, like, it is a toughness, like a military toughness or, like, the street toughness or something. Yeah. Yeah. You need resiliency. Uh, you need resiliency, which clearly the three of us have. <laughs> as we, has wait, we have waited in the waters of cannabis and are rising to the top slowly. You ever seen that, um... What is that, Jalen? You gotta make this more interesting. Clip some, clip some shit in. But it's where they dive. They do free diving and they go all the way down. And then they have to come up and someone grabs them to lift them to the top. Oh, wow. Just at the end, right before they are about to lose their last breath. It's a really, really intense sport. Oh, wow. I'm sure the adrenaline is crazy because you have to swim all the way to the bottom. You don't have any scuba gear. You have nothing. You're free and diving. Thousands of feet below. And they grab it, but then somebody comes on the last bit to get that last bit of air. And I swear I feel like that, that's what yeah, this is like. Yeah, no, I've definitely had that. Like, if we won a grand, like I was saying, like, that was definitely, like, a lift up that way. And you can definitely feel like a struggling swimmer, like, sometimes. And it is difficult. And, like, yeah, like, we want to be, like, the media everywhere and cover every dispensary. I have not been every dispensary. And I'm, like, 40 down, and it's really difficult. You know, I live in North Jersey. You know, I love Jersey City that way. Going there, you know, I live in Essex, you know, like coming down here, like Lansing, we're down here, we're making the most of it. I don't, I'm not coming down to South Jersey like an hour and a half every day, you know, it's yeah. intense. Yeah, To see like all of that, you know, so like, it's difficult, you know, and you know, you've got to figure out and prioritize like what is like important to you and like self-care and like figuring stuff out like that. Yeah. It's mad important. It could be costly, right? Because you're traveling everywhere. Yeah. That's a part of your business. Showing up to these dispensaries, that is your job. That's part yeah. of your business. And yeah, this state is really big. People don't realize that all of these things cost. All the value add that you're giving at the same time, it's costing your business something. So I just want to say thank you just from us personally here appreciate at Toss. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You appreciate know, it. I know when we've went to boards and stuff, whether you're reporting for the people or you're reporting because you support the fact that we are everything that you want to see in the market, we appreciate it. You don't have to do it. And I want people to understand that, like, yes, this is community, but when people are pouring into you, they don't have to. People don't have to pour into other people. It's what we should do, but that's how our cup overfloweth, right? Yeah. We have that extraness, and we give the information to someone else where yeah. we put them up on a pedestal or we prop them up on our platform. So I'm, I'm so grateful for what you've done for us here at Toss of giving us more visibility. No, you guys are great. You're, like, the goal. That's the thing. It's, like, trying to support, like, Britain. instead of, like, the large white boy owned, like, MSL that doesn't care about these things, like, having you with the Goldilocks, you know, you care. The community-minded, justice-minded, you know, fellow Hispanic, you know, yep. it's important. Yeah. I got my three bears around. <laughs> <laughs> you roll you deep. Know, I, I, I always keep my soldiers list. The military thing is always going to stick with me. So you got to have people that have your back. Yeah, it's a big issue. It's like the team and figuring yeah. out the team. You need it. You need like it. Again, like a team effort, yeah. Yep. So I thank you from us and our team, but also for the rest of the market in New Jersey, for anybody else who doesn't have any goddamn gratitude. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, thank you have helped to contribute to building this. I hope the CRC and a lot of other folks understand that because to Corey's point, you have been the go-to. Literally, you, 420NJ Events, there's like four places that we trust to get real information from. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate Make sure that. you guys go check it out. Please shout your stuff out. Give all, tell them how to follow you, how to find you. Yeah, you want more news about the politics of uh, Jersey, the, the industry, the culture, about cannabis, about shrooms, about hemp, about CBD, you know, go to headynj.com for your latest update. That's it. Thank you. Corey? Peace. We out. <laughs>